Want to break into the board game hobby but overwhelmed by all the options out there? Don't worry, today we're going to discuss the best 5 gateway board games to introduce you to modern gaming. What's happening Meeples? Welcome to Hero of the Meeple where we talk board games and more. You know, I've always enjoyed board games ever since I was a little kid. I remember playing games like Monopoly, Clue, and then high school happened and I became too cool for school for that. Yeah, I was a badass. However, over the last several years, I've really gotten back into the hobby um, and I was really excited and happy to see that board games have evolved over the years to be a lot more complex, strategic, artistic, collaborative. I know that a lot of these games existed when I was growing up, but now board gaming is such a different industry and I'm so happy to be a part of it as it's now a lot more of a community driven industry. One of the challenges of being a board game enthusiast is getting your friends to also be enthusiasts, especially when you just played a three hour narrative based game last night that you've been talking about for the last hour and your friends are at the table getting ready to play board games with you and then all of a sudden one of them says, you know what, I think I need to get going. And then the one next to them says, yeah, me too. And you're just like, please, Please just stay, we'll play Uno, we'll play Cards Against Humanity. So by no means are any of those three hour narrative based games on today's list. However, once we get through today's list and you've played a few of these games, you might find yourself interested in one of those games. Let me know, I'm looking for people to play with. So that's why today I'm talking about the top five, top five gateway board games to get you into modern board gaming. These games are not in any particular order, however, they all will serve as a good introduction into modern board gaming to get you and your friends to the table tonight. Before we get started, please take a moment to like and subscribe so I know that I'm doing something right. Number one, King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo is a game for two to six players by ELO Games, where players will take on the role of big kaiju monsters trying to battle it out to be the king of Tokyo. Players can either win by scoring the most victory points or, my favorite, by being the last monster standing. If you're the type of person that loves I Got You games, you're really gonna love King of Tokyo because it's all about screwing over your friends to be top monster. King of Tokyo is a dice rolling game, so there's nothing more satisfying than when you're trying to be on the offense, rolling die that are filled with claw marks. Claw marks are going to be attacks and just destroying your friends. It'll be a lot of back and forth battling, which is really gonna keep players engaged. As I mentioned, it's a dice rolling game, so you'll get six dice with different symbols on them. You'll roll and you'll actually get two re-rolls, so three rolls in total, with whatever rolls in the final roll being your final move. It can be a lot of fun to see if you get enough attack rolls to really damage your, your, your friends or enough heart rolls to heal from their recent attacks. Will you play to win with points or be the last monster standing? <laughs> Next up, number two, Five Minute Dungeon. Five Minute Dungeon is a game for two to five players by Cosmos. The game plays exactly as the name suggests. You and your friends will take on the roles of different warriors such as a wizard, a paladin, to go through a dungeon and fight all the monsters in there in five minutes or less. Will your team be able to get through the dungeon in less than five minutes? So this is a really fast paced, engaging game. There is no downtime. Everybody's playing at exactly the same time. Everybody's going to select a different type of warrior class and each of you are gonna have your own unique abilities and unique player deck to contribute towards the defeating the baddies in the dungeon. Players will work together to put together specific cards that are needed to defeat the next baddie in the dungeon. I fell in love with this game the first time I played it. It is really fast paced, it is really exciting. There's actual adrenaline and fear as you're playing this game and the timer is going down. The base game comes with five different dungeon bosses. So theoretically, if you wanted to go from the easiest boss to the hardest boss, about five minutes each, and some setup in between, uh, you're looking at a max 30 minute game. So this is a really great game for those type of friends that they don't have a lot of patience for longer games, but they want something quick, something exciting, something interactive. This is gonna sell them, trust me. Moving on to number three, it's Sagrada. <laughs> Sagrada is a game for one to four players by Floodgate Games. 
In Sagrada, players will draft colorful dice to fill their stained glass windows. Players will be limited by specific patterns that they're working toward to score the most points. So think carefully when drafting your die. The player with the most points at the end is going to score the victory. This is a really simple game with some stunning aesthetics. If you know me, I am a sucker for board game aesthetics and art. When board game shopping, if a box catches my eye with some beautiful art, definitely I'm gonna pick it up and see what it's all about. Probably I'm gonna take it home. I'm somewhat biased, uh, especially when I first saw Sagrada, as I've actually been to the place that it's based off of, the Basilica de Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, Spain. It is one of the most amazing structures I've ever seen. And when I played the game for the first time, I was really excited to see that the aesthetics of the game really do match the in-person Sagrada. Anyway, one of the things I really love about Sagrada is just how easy it is to get into. There's very little setup. There's not a whole lot of rules and explaining to do. So it's really easy to just throw on the table and get your players going. The base game is for one to four players, meaning there are rules to play solo. So if you're the type of individual that likes to play board games on your own, Sagrada is definitely an option for you. There's also an expansion for five to six players. It's something that I actually have as well. It obviously gives you the opportunity to bring more people to the table, which once you play Sagrada for the first time, you're probably gonna wanna bring more friends to the table for this one. We're at number four, Tiny Towns. Tiny Towns is a game for one to six players by Alderic Entertainment Group. In Tiny Towns, players are gonna be working to build different buildings on their town grid using resources available to them. The catch is that players will be taking turns mandating which resources are required to build with. Materials need to be placed on your town grid within specific patterns to eventually be turned into a building. A strategic combination of buildings at the end of the game is gonna score you the most points and the victory. One of the elements that I really enjoy about Tiny Towns is the simultaneous gameplay. There are no turns necessarily. Everybody is building at the same time. The one caveat is that before moving on to the next round, everybody needs to finish building first. This keeps everybody engaged, even when they're not the one choosing the resource to build with, which is uh, a big gimmick of Tiny Towns is you'll take turns deciding what resources you have to build with, which if you're the person waiting for the stone resource, but the the player in front of you just picked wheat and you have no room for it on the board, it's gonna leave you feeling really nervous. There's a lot of replayability in Tiny Towns as there's so many different combinations of buildings that you can select for, for each game. I'd say overall Tiny Towns is a fairly relaxing game, however it can get kind of tense when you're waiting for a specific resource to come up and nobody's choosing it. Rounding up the list is number five, Pandemic. Pandemic is a game for one to four players by Z-Man Games. In Pandemic, you and your friends will take on the role of crisis managers and public health professionals to stop four diseases from spreading throughout the globe. If you and your friends can either cure or eradicate the diseases before they have too far widespread, then you and your entire team will win. Pandemic is the game that got me into modern board gaming. Right now, not only do I have the base game for Pandemic, I have um, all of its expansions as well as Pandemic Legacy. Pandemic serves as a great game to introduce you and your friends to collaborative games. Growing up, I played only competitive games, and right now most of my collection is still competitive games, but I really enjoy a great collaborative game. Obviously, Pandemic is on this list, and I did say it's what got me into modern board gaming, so by itself, it is an excellent game. However, the expansions um, really offer a lot as well. So if you already have Pandemic, or if you've already played Pandemic and are looking to get an expansion, I will definitely say In the Lab is an essential expansion. It not only makes the game feel complete, but adds somewhat more of a re more realistic feel to it. I did say that at the beginning of the video, this is not a ranked list. However, if I was going to rank this list, Pandemic would be number one for sure. It is a great, excellent game to introduce you to modern board gaming. One more thing that I'll mention about the expansions is that they do offer rules for one to five players. So again, this gives you the ability to play solo and also bring another friend to the table. All right, we've made it through the list. If you were too enamored by these five board games or by my narration of these games to take a moment to like and subscribe, please take that moment now. 
So what'd you think? Planning on picking up any of these five games? Let me know down in the comments. Have you played any of these five? Let me know what you thought about it. And if you want me to do a more in-depth video on any of these five games, be sure to let me know. All right, Meeples, this hero has some gaming to do. I'll see you later.